When assessing a patient's skin, the nurse needs to know that a restricted movement can increase blood circulation. B. Paralyzed patients have normal sensory function. C. Loss of subcutaneous tissue may increase the rate of wound healing. D. Moisture on the skin can lead to skin maceration. Answer. D. Moisture on the skin can lead to skin maceration rationale. Moisture on the surface of the skin serves as a medium for bacterial growth and causes irritation, softens epidermal cells, and leads to skin maceration. When restricted from moving freely, dependent body parts are exposed to pressure that reduces circulation to affected tissues. Know which patients require help to turn and change positions. Patients with paralysis, circulatory insufficiency, or local nerve damage are unable to sense an injury to the skin. Patients with limited caloric and protein intake develop thinner, less elastic skin with loss of subcutaneous tissue, which results in impaired or delayed wound healing and Teaching a family member caregiver how to bathe the patient explains the importance of using long strokes on the patient's extremities. Moving from distal to proximal. Which explanation does the nurse include? Long strokes moving from distal to proximal are used to a. decrease the chance of infection. b. help remove dry, flaky skin. c. prevent skin trauma. d. stimulate venous return. Answer. D. Stimulate venous return. Rationale. The pressure from long, smooth strokes moving from distal to proximal areas presses on the veins, which promotes venous return. A nurse caring for a male patient observes the nursing assistive personnel, NAP, performing perennial care. Which of the following observed actions indicates a need for further teaching for the NAP? The NAP. A. Used clean gloves. B. Did not retract the foreskin before cleansing. C. Used the clean portion of washcloth for each cleansing wipe. D. Used a circular motion to cleanse from urinary metis outward. Answer. B. Did not retract the foreskin before cleansing. Rationale. Secretions collect beneath the foreskin and can promote bacterial growth if not removed. While planning morning care, which of the following patients would receive the highest priority to receive his or her bath first? A. A patient who just returned to the nursing unit from surgery and is experiencing pain at a level of 7 on a scale of 0 to 10 B. A patient who prefers a bath in the evening when his wife visits and can help him see. A patient who is experiencing frequent incontinent diarrheal stools D. A patient who has just returned from diagnostic testing and complains of being very fatigued. Answer. C. A patient who is experiencing frequent incontinent diarrheal stools rationale. Patients who have body fluids, excretions, secretions, or wastes on the skin require immediate hygiene care. Hygiene care can be delayed for patients with pain or fatigue until these symptoms are controlled as long as there is no compelling reason such as drainage. Allowing patients to make choices involves them in care and gives them control. A nurse is completing an assessment of the patient. Which principle is a priority? A. Foot care will always be important. B. Daily bathing will always be important. C. Hygiene needs will always be important. D. Critical thinking will always be important. Answer. D. Critical thinking will always be important. Rationale. A patient's condition is always changing, requiring ongoing critical thinking and changing of nursing diagnoses. Apply the elements of critical thinking as you use the nursing process to meet patients' hygiene needs. Critical thinking will help you determine when foot care, daily bathing, and hygiene needs are important and when they are not. In 
nurse is teaching the parents of a child who has head lice, pediculosis capitis. Which information will the nurse include in the teaching session? A. Treatment is use of regular shampoo. B. Products containing lindane are most effective. C. Head lice may spread to furniture and other people. D. Manual removal is not a realistic option as treatment. Answer. C. Head lice may spread to furniture and other people. Rationale. Head lice are difficult to remove and spread to furniture and other people if not treated. Caution against use of products containing lindane because the ingredient is toxic and is known to cause adverse reactions. Treatments use medicated shampoo for eliminating lice. Manual removal is the best option when treatment has failed. Assessment of the hair and scalp reveals that John has head lice. An appropriate intervention would be 1. Shave hair off the affected area. 2. Place oil on the hair and scalp until all of the lice are dead. 3. Shampoo with medicated shampoo and repeat 12 to 24 hours later. 4. Shampoo with regular shampoo and dry with hair dryer set at the hottest setting. Answer. 3. Shampoo with medicated shampoo and repeat 12 to 24 hours later. Rationale. Use a medicated shampoo for eliminating lice, which are easily able to spread to furniture and other people if not treated. During bathing your patient experiences shortness of breath and labored breathing with a respiratory rate of 30. The bed is in a flat position. You change the bed position to A. Trendelenburgs B. Reverse Trendelenburgs C. Fowlers D. Semi Fowlers Answer. C. Fowler's rationale. Fowler's upright sitting position facilitates breathing by allowing for full expansion of the chest and lungs. Although reverse Trendelenburg's position raises the head of the bed, it is a straight tilt position and is not likely as comfortable as the more supported Fowler's position. The nurse is teaching a patient about contact lens care. Which instructions will the nurse include in the teaching session? A. Use tap water to clean soft lenses. B. Wash and rinse lens storage case daily. C. Reuse storage solution for up to a week. D. Keep the lenses as a cool dry place when not being used. Answer. B. Wash and rinse lens storage case daily. Rationale. Thoroughly wash and rinse lens storage case on a daily basis. Clean periodically with soap or liquid detergent. Rinse thoroughly with warm water and air dry. Do not use tap water to clean soft lenses. Lenses should be kept moist or wet when not worn. Use fresh solution daily when storing and disinfecting lenses. A nurse is listening to a student provide instruction to a patient who is having difficulty with activities needed to care for soft contact lenses. Which of the following statements by the nursing student might require some correction by the nurse? A. Use tap water to clean soft lenses. B. Follow recommendations of lens manufacturer when inserting the lenses. C. Keep lenses moist or wet when not worn. D. Use fresh solution daily when storing and disinfecting lenses. Answer. A. Use tap water to clean soft lenses. Rationale. The patient should not use water to clean soft contact lenses. The patient reports to the nurse about a perceived decrease in hearing. When the nurse examines the patient's ear, a large amount of cerumen buildup at the entrance to the ear canal is observed. Which action will the nurse take next? A. Teach the patient how to use cotton-tipped applicators. B. Tell the patient to use a bobby pin to extract earwax. C. Apply gentle, downward retraction of the ear canal. D. Instill hot water into the ear canal to melt the wax.
Answer. C. Apply gentle, downward retraction of the ear canal. Rationale. When cerumen is visible, gentle, downward retraction at the entrance to the ear canal causes the wax to loosen and slip out. Instruct the patient never to use sharp objects such as bobby pins or paper clips to remove earwax. Use of such objects can traumatize the ear canal and ruptures the tympanic membrane. Avoid the use of cotton-tipped applicators as well because they cause earwax to become impacted within the canal. Instilling cold or hot water causes nausea or vomiting. A nurse is providing oral care to a patient with stomatitis. Which technique will the nurse use? A. Avoid commercial mouthwashes. B. Avoid normal saline rinses. C. Brush with a hard toothbrush. D. Brush with an alcohol-based toothpaste. Answer. A. Avoid commercial mouthwashes. Rationale. Stomatitis causes burning, pain, and change in food and fluid tolerance. Advise patients to avoid alcohol and commercial mouthwash and stop smoking. When caring for patients with stomatitis, brush with a soft toothbrush and floss gently to prevent bleeding of the gums. In some cases, flossing needs to be temporarily omitted from oral care. Normal saline rinses, approximately 30 milliliters, on awaking in the morning, after each meal, and at bedtime help clean the oral cavity. A patient receiving chemotherapy experiences stomatitis. The nurse advises the patient to use a community mouthwash, b. alcohol-based mouth rinse, c. normal saline rinses, d. firm toothbrush. Answer. C. Normal saline rinses. Rationale. Normal saline is the safest solution to use in caring for a patient with stomatitis. Alcohol and community mouthwashes can be irritating and burning. A soft toothbrush should be used. When a nurse delegates hygiene care for a male patient to a nurse assistant, the assistant to must use an electric razor to shave the patient with the following diagnosis, a congestive heart failure B pneumonia C arthritis D thrombocytopenia. Answer. B. Thrombocytopenia rationale. Patients prone to bleeding, e.g., those receiving anticoagulants or high doses of aspirin or those with low platelet counts, need to use an electric razor. The nurse observes an adult Middle Eastern patient attempting to bathe himself with only his left hand. The nurse recognizes that this behavior likely relates to a obsessive-compulsive behavior. B. Personal preferences. C. The patient's cultural norm. D. Controlling behaviors. Answer. C. The patient's cultural norm. Rationale. Cultural beliefs often influence patients' hygiene practices. Middle Eastern practices encourage one hand to be kept clean at all times. The patient has been diagnosed with diabetes. When admitted, the patient is unkempt and is in need of a bath and foot care. When questioned about hygiene habits, the nurse learns the patient takes a bath once a week and a sponge bath every other day. To provide ultimate care for this patient, which principle should the nurse keep in mind? A. Patients who appear unkempt place little importance on hygiene practices. B. Personal preferences determine hygiene practices and are unchangeable. C. The patient's illness may require teaching of new hygiene practices. D. All cultures value cleanliness with the same degree of importance. Answer. C. The patient's illness may require teaching of new hygiene practices. Rationale. The nurse must assist the patient in developing new hygiene practices when indicated by an illness or condition. For example, the nurse will need to teach a patient with diabetes proper foot hygiene. 
Patients who appear unkempt often need further assessment regarding their ability to participate in daily hygiene. Patients with certain types of physical limitations or disabilities often lack the physical energy and dexterity to perform hygienic care. Culturally, maintaining cleanliness does not hold the same importance for some ethnic groups as it does for others. The nurse is caring for a patient who is immobile. The nurse frequently checks the patient for impaired skin integrity. What is the rationale for the nurse's action? A. Inadequate blood flow leads to decreased tissue ischemia. B. Patients with limited caloric intake develop thicker skin. C. Pressure reduces circulation to affected tissue. D. Verbalization of skincare needs is decreased. Answer. C. Pressure reduces circulation to affected tissue. Rationale. Body parts exposed to pressure have reduced circulation to affected tissue. Patients with limited caloric and protein intake develop thinner, less elastic skin with loss of subcutaneous tissue. Inadequate blood flow causes ischemia and breakdown. Verbalization is affected when altered cognition occurs from dementia, psychological disorders, or temporary delirium, not from immobility. The nurse is caring for a patient who has diabetes mellitus and circulatory insufficiency, with peripheral neuropathy and urinary incontinence. On which areas does the nurse focus care? A. Decreased pain sensation and increased risk of skin impairment B. Decreased caloric intake and accelerated wound healing C. High risk for skin infection and low saliva pH level D. High risk for impaired venous return and dementia. Answer. A. Decreased pain sensation and increased risk of skin impairment rationale. Patients with paralysis, circulatory insufficiency. Our peripheral neuropathy nerve damage, are unable to sense an injury to the skin, decreased pain sensation. The presence of urinary incontinence, circulatory insufficiency, and neuropathy can combine to result in breakdown, so the patient has an increased risk of skin impairment. While the patient may have decreased caloric intake, the patient will not have accelerated wound healing with circulatory insufficiency, neuropathy, and incontinence. While the patient is at high risk for skin infection, the low salivary pH level is not an issue. While the patient may have a high risk for impaired venous return from the circulatory insufficiency, there is no indication the patient has dementia. In examining a patient for pediculosis capitis, head lice, the nurse would expect to find a grayish-white parasites with red legs, b pustules or bites behind ears and at the hairline, c, balding patches in periphery of the hairline, d, brittle and broken hair. Answer, b, pustules or bites behind ears and at the hairline rationale. With head lice, the parasite is on the scalp attached to hair stands. Bites or pustules may be observed behind the ears and at the hairline. Grayish-white parasites with red legs are pediculosis pubis, crab lice, not head lice, and are found in pubic hair. Alopecia, hair loss, is found in all races, with brittle and broken hair and balding patchiness in the periphery of the hairline. The patient is diagnosed with pediculosis capitis, head lice, and was treated upon admission and was re-treated 24 hours later, yet the patient is still infested. The nurse should next day retreat the patient with a medicated shampoo for eliminating lice. B. Use a product containing lindane to get rid of the lice. C. Manually remove the lice using a fine toothed comb. D. Have the patient bathe or shower thoroughly. Answer. C. Manually remove the lice using a fine-toothed comb rationale. Manual removal is the best option when treatment has failed.
Retreating with a medicated shampoo may lead to adverse reactions and should not be done without consulting the care provider. Products containing lindane should not be used because the ingredient is toxic and is known to cause adverse reactions. Although bathing or showering is a good idea, this is usually considered a treatment for pediculosis corporis, body lice, not pediculosis capitis, head lice. The patient is reporting an inability to clear nasal passages. Which action will the nurse take? A. Use gentle suction to prevent tissue damage. B. Instruct patient to blow nose forcefully to clear the passage. C. Place a dry washcloth under the nose to absorb secretions. D. Insert a cotton-tipped applicator to the back of the nose. Answer. A. Use gentle suction to prevent tissue damage. Rationale. Excessive nasal secretions can be removed using gentle suctioning. However, patients usually remove secretions from the nose by gentle blowing into a soft tissue. Caution the patient against harsh blowing that creates pressure capable of injuring the eardrum, the nasal mucosa, and even sensitive eye structures. If the patient is unable to remove nasal secretions, assist by using a wet washcloth or a cotton-tipped applicator moistened in water or saline. Never insert the applicator beyond the length of the cotton tip. Mrs. Beach has diabetes. Which intervention should be included in her teaching plan regarding foot care? 1. Use a pumice stone to smooth corns and calluses. 2. File toenails straight across and square. 3. Apply powder to dry areas along the feet and between the toes. 4. Wear elastic stockings to improve circulation. Answer. 2. File toenails straight across and square. Rationale. File the toenails straight across and square. Do not use scissors or clippers. Consult a podiatrist as needed. Patients with diabetes mellitus need special foot care to prevent the development of ulcers. Knowing this, the nurse A. Trims the patient's toenails daily. B. Has the patient soak his or her feet twice a day. C. Requests a consult with a nail care specialist. D. Assesses the brachial artery. Answer. C. Requests a consult with a nail care specialist rationale. Patients with peripheral vascular disease or diabetes mellitus often require nail care from a specialist to reduce the risk of infection. Some agencies allow cutting of nails with a provider's order. However, most do not. Patients with diabetes do not soak hands and feet. Soaking increases the risk of infection because of maceration of the skin. When assessing the patient's feet, the nurse palpates the dorsalis pedis of the foot, not the brachial artery. You are helping a female patient bathe. As you are about to perform perineal care, the patient says, I can finish my bath. The patient has discomfort and burning in the perineal area. What action do you need to take initially? A. Explain to the patient that, because of her symptoms, you need to observe the perineal area. B. Insist that you are supposed to complete the care. C. Honor the patient's request to complete her own perineal care to avoid any embarrassment. D. Ask the patient if a family member can complete the care instead. Answer. I explain to the patient that, because of her symptoms, you need to observe the perineal area. Rationale. The symptoms of burning and discomfort indicate a problem. It is your responsibility to perform an assessment to note any vaginal or urethral discharge, skin irritation, and odors. It is not safe to let embarrassment cause you to overlook hygiene needs and the diagnosis of problems. Providing information and patient teaching often encourages patient cooperation. What is the priority concern when providing oral hygiene for a patient who is unconscious? A. 
Thoroughly brushing all tooth and oral surfaces. B. Preventing aspiration. C. Controlling mouth odor. D. Applying local antiseptic such as chlorhexidine. Answer. B. Preventing aspiration rationale. Although thorough and effective cleaning is needed. Measures to prevent aspiration of oral secretions and or cleaning agents into the lungs take priority since aspiration can lead to lower respiratory infections. When providing hygiene for an elderly patient, it is important for the nurse to closely assess the skin. This is because as the patient ages, what is the rationale for the nurse's action? A. Outer skin layer becomes more resilient. B. Less frequent bathing may be required. C. Skin becomes less subject to bruising. D. Sweat glands become more active. Answer. B. Less frequent bathing may be required. Rationale. In older adults, daily bathing as well as bathing with water that is too hot or soap that is harsh causes the skin to become excessively dry. As the patient ages, the skin thins and loses its resiliency and moisture. And lubricating skin glands become less active, making the skin fragile and prone to bruising and breaking. The nurse is bathing a patient and notices movement in the patient's hair. Which action will the nurse take? A. Use gloves or a tongue blade to inspect the hair. B. Apply a lindane-based shampoo immediately. C. Shave the hair off of the patient's head. D. Ignore the movement and continue. Answer. A. Use gloves or a tongue blade to inspect the hair. Rationale. In community health and home care settings, it is particularly important to inspect the hair for lice so appropriate hygienic treatment can be provided. Suspicions cannot be ignored. If pediculosis capitis, head lice, is suspected, the nurse must protect self against self infestations by hand washing and by using gloves or tongue blades to inspect the patient's hair. Suspicions cannot be ignored. Shaving hair off affected areas is the treatment for pediculosis pubis, crab lice, and is rarely used for head lice. Caution against use of products containing lindane because the ingredient is toxic and known to cause adverse reactions. The patient has been brought to the emergency department following a motor vehicle accident. The patient is unresponsive. The driver's license states that glasses are needed to operate a motor vehicle, but no glasses were brought in with the patient. Which action should the nurse take next? A. Stand to the side of the patient's eye and observe the cornea. B. Conclude that the glasses were lost during the accident. C. Notify the ambulance personnel for missing glasses. D. Ask the patient where the glasses are. Answer. A. Stand to the side of the patient's eye and observe the cornea. Rationale. An important aspect of an eye examination is to determine if the patient wears contact lenses. Especially in patients who are unresponsive. To determine whether a contact lens is present, stand to the side of the patient's eye and observe the cornea for the presence of a soft or rigid lens. It is also important to observe the sclera to detect the presence of a lens that has shifted off the cornea. An undetected lens causes severe corneal injury when left in place too long. Never assume that glasses were lost or were not worn. Contacting ambulance personnel takes time and cannot assume the glasses are missing. Asking the patient where the glasses are is inappropriate since the patient is unresponsive. What is the proper position to use for an unresponsive patient during oral care to prevent aspiration? Select all that apply. A. Prone position B. Sims position C. Semi Fowler's position with head to side D. Trendelenburg position E. Supine position. Answer. B. Sims position C. Semi Fowler's position with head to side rationale. 
Place the unconscious patient in semi-fowler's position with head to the side or use the sims position to help avoid aspiration while performing oral care. The supine and Trendelenburg positions would make it easier for a patient to aspirate. The prone position would not be suitable for accessing the oral cavity. Ruth prepares to give Mr. Epstein a bed bath since he is not able to bathe independently. Which of the following are guidelines that she should follow while giving him a bed bath? Select all that apply. A. Maintain safety. B. Provide privacy. C. Maintain warmth. D. Promote independence. E. Hydrate skin. Answer. A. Maintain safety. B. Provide privacy. C. Maintain warmth. D. Promote independence. Rationale. Guidelines for giving a bed bath are to maintain safety, provide privacy, maintain warmth. Promote independence and anticipate needs. The patient has been forcefully blowing his nose and now has a nosebleed. The nurse is concerned about the patient's condition and assesses the patient for which possible negative issues. Select all that apply. A. Clearance of nasal passages B. Injury to the tympanic membrane, eardrum, C. Damage to nasal mucosa D. Eye injury E. Decreased nasal passage pressure. Answer. B. Injury to the tympanic membrane, eardrum, C. Damage to nasal mucosa D. Eye injury Nurse is caring for a patient with cognitive impairments. Which actions will the nurse take during AM care? Select all that apply. A. Administer ordered analgesic one hour before bath time. B. Increase the frequency of skin assessment. C. Reduce triggers in the environment. D. Keep the room temperature cool. E. Be as quick as possible. Answer. B. Increase the frequency of skin assessment. C. Reduce triggers in the environment. Rationale. If a patient is physically dependent or cognitively impaired, increase the frequency of skin assessment. Adapt your bathing procedures and the environment to reduce the triggers. For example, administer any ordered analgesic 30 minutes before a bath and be gentle in your approach. Keep the patient's body as warm as possible with warm towels and be sure the room temperature is comfortable. The nurse is caring for a patient who has peripheral neuropathy. Which clinical manifestations does the nurse expect to find upon assessment? Select all that apply. A. Abnormal gait B. Foot deformities C. Absent or decreased pedal pulses D. Muscle wasting of lower extremities E. Decreased hair growth on legs and feet. Answer. A. Abnormal gait B. Foot deformities D. Muscle wasting of lower extremities rationale. A patient with peripheral neuropathy has muscle wasting of lower extremities, foot deformities. And abnormal gait. A patient with vascular insufficiency will have decreased hair growth on legs and feet absent or decreased pulses, and thickened nails. A nurse is providing hygiene care to a bariatric patient using chlorhexidine gluconate, CHG, wipes. Which actions will the nurse take? Select all that apply. A. Do not rinse. B. Clean under breasts. C. Inform that the skin will feel sticky. D. Dry thoroughly between skin folds. E. Use two wipes for each area of the body. Answer. A. Do not rinse. B. Clean under breasts. C. Inform that the skin will feel sticky. Rationale. CHG wipes are easy to use and accessible for older patients and bariatric patients. Offering a no rinse or drying procedure. For a bariatric patient or a patient who is diaphoretic, provide special attention to body areas such as beneath the woman's breasts, in the groin. 
skin folds, and perineal area, where moisture collects and irritates skin surfaces. Use wipes as directed on package, one wipe per each area of the body. CHG can leave the skin feeling sticky. If patients complain about its use, you need to explain their vulnerability to infection and how CHG helps reduce occurrence of healthcare-associated infection. A male nurse is caring for a 32-year-old female Muslim patient who has an indwelling Foley catheter. After introducing himself to the patient, the nurse learns that the patient does not want him to help her with personal hygiene care. Which of the following is? R. Appropriate actions. Select all that apply. A. Finding a female nurse to help the patient. B. Convincing the patient that he will work quickly and provide as much privacy as possible. C. Skipping hygiene care for the day except for the parts that the patient can complete independently. D. Asking the patient if she prefers a family member assist with the care. Answer. A. Finding a female nurse to help the patient. D. Asking the patient if she prefers a family member assist with the care rationale. Asking the patient if she prefers a family member assist with the care cultural variations affecting hygiene care include gender congruent concerns. Pressuring patients to accept cultural values that they do not believe in and value is inappropriate. Patients with Foley catheters require routine perennial care. Skipping care is not a safe practice. The use of critical thinking attitudes is necessary to design a plan of care to meet the patient's hygiene needs. Which of the following are considered critical thinking attitudes? Select all that apply. A. Curiosity B. Communication principles C. Prior experience D. Humility E. Knowledge of Cultural Variations Answer A. Curiosity D. Humility Rationale Use of critical thinking attitudes, such as curiosity and humility, is necessary to design a plan of care to meet the patient's hygiene needs. Communication principles and knowledge of cultural variations in hygiene are considered knowledge elements and prior experience is part of the experience elements of the critical thinking model for hygiene assessment. The patient must stay in bed for a bed change. Which actions will the nurse implement? Select all that apply. A. Apply sterile gloves. B. Keep soiled linen close to uniform. C. Advise patient will feel a lump when rolling over. D. Turn clean pillowcase inside out over the hand holding it. E. Make a modified mitered corner with sheet, blanket, and spread. Answer. C. Advise patient will feel a lump when rolling over. D. Turn clean pillowcase inside out over the hand holding it. E. Make a modified mitered corner with sheet, blanket, and spread. Rationale. When making an occupied bed, advise patients they will feel a lump when turning, turn clean pillowcase inside out, and make a modified mitered corner. Clean gloves are used. Keep soiled linen away from uniform. A patient who is receiving chemotherapy has inflamed gums and oral mucosa and painful sores in the mouth. Which of the following oral care actions are appropriate? Select all that apply. A. Decreasing frequency of oral hygiene B. Applying water-soluble moisturizing gel on the oral mucosa C. Encouraging intake of soft foods D. Using commercial mouthwash Answer B. Applying water-soluble moisturizing gel on the oral mucosa C. Encouraging intake of soft foods rationale Many commercial mouthwashes contain alcohol which dries oral mucosa and causes pain. Although the mouth is tender, more frequent than usual care is needed to help hydrate tissue and prevent infection. Preventing drying out of the oral tissue helps healing. Eating soft foods is more comfortable for the patient your patient wears full dentures.
His usual denture care includes taking the teeth out once a day to brush. He wears the dentures overnight. You are concerned that he might be at risk for developing denture-induced stomatitis. Which points do you include in a teaching plan for denture care? Select all that apply. A. Remove dentures overnight once a week while they soak in a cleansing bath. B. Do not wear damaged or poorly fitting dentures. C. Observe mouth for reddened areas under the dentures and small red sores on the roof of the mouth. D. See dentist regularly. E. Rinse dentures after meals. F. Clean dentures every night with cleanser, rinsing well before replacing in mouth at bedtime. Answer. B. Do not wear damaged or poorly fitting dentures. C. Observe mouth for reddened areas under the dentures and small red sores on the roof of the mouth. D. See dentist regularly. E. Rinse dentures after meals. Rationale. Denture stomatitis is caused by wearing dentures that do not fit well, wearing dentures overnight. And poor denture cleaning habits that promote buildup of the yeast candida albicans. The development of denture stomatitis is prevented by interfering with the buildup by removing the dentures. Overnight, cleaning properly and preventing damage to the oral mucosa, gums, and palate which patients will the nurse determine are in need of perennial care. Select all that apply. A. A patient with rectal and genital surgical dressings. B. A patient with urinary and fecal incontinence. C. A circumcised male who is ambulatory. D. A patient who has an indwelling catheter. E. A bariatric patient. Answer. A. A patient with rectal and genital surgical dressings. B. A patient with urinary and fecal incontinence. D. A patient who has an indwelling catheter. E. A bariatric patient rationale. Patients most in need of perennial care include those at greatest risk for acquiring an infection, e.g., uncircumcised males, patients who have indwelling urinary catheters or those who are recovering from rectal or genital surgery or childbirth. A patient with urinary and bowel incontinence needs perennial cleaning with each episode of soiling. Bariatric patients need special attention to body areas such as skin folds in the perennial area. In addition, women who are having a menstrual period require perennial care. Circumcised males are not at high risk for acquiring infection, and ambulatory patients can usually provide perennial self-care. Which of the following developmental changes? Which are most commonly associated with the elderly? Select all that apply. A. Increased eccrine and apocrine gland function. B. Fungal nail infections. C. Less resilient skin and bruising. D. Increased skin lubrication. E dry, itchy skin. Answer. B. Fungal nail infections. C. Less resilient skin and bruising. E. Dry, itchy skin rationale. Common problems of the feet affecting older adults include corns, calluses, bunions, hammer toe, and fungal infections. Long or roughened nails lead to traumatic nail avulsions in which the nail plate is torn from the nail bed. Older adults often have dry feet because of a decrease in sebaceous gland secretion and dehydration of epidermal cells. With aging, the rate of epidermal cell replacement slows, and the skin thins and loses resiliency. Moisture leaves the skin, increasing the risk for bruising and other types of injury. As production of lubricating substances by skin glands decreases, the skin becomes dry and itchy. The nurse is admitting an elderly patient for failure to thrive and weight loss. A nasogastric tube is inserted for supplemental tube feedings. The nurse should become concerned when, select all that apply. A. Bleeding is noted where the tube comes in contact with the nares. B. Nasal mucosa is pink. C. No discharge from the nose is noted. D. 
clear, watery discharge is noted. Answer. A. Bleeding is noted where the tube comes in contact with the nares. D. Clear, watery discharge is noted. Rationale. If patients have any form of tubing exiting the nose, e.g., nasogastric, Observe for tissue damage, localized tenderness, inflammation, drainage, and bleeding where the tubing comes in contact with the nares. Allergies cause a clear, watery discharge. The nasal mucosa is normally pink and clear and has little or no discharge. A patient uses an in-the-canal hearing aid. Which assessment is a priority? A. Eyeglass usage B. Ceramin buildup C. Type of physical exercise D. Excessive moisture problems. Answer. B. Ceramin buildup rationale. With this type of model, in the canal, ceramin tends to plug this model more than others. There are three popular types of hearing aids. And in the canal, ITC aid is the newest, smallest, and least visible and fits entirely in the ear canal. It has cosmetic appeal, is easy to manipulate and place in the ear, and does not interfere with wearing eyeglasses or using the telephone, and the patient can wear it during most physical exercise. And in the ear aid, ITE, or intraoral, is more noticeable than the ITC aid and is not for people with moisture or skin problems in the ear canal. The larger size of this type of aid, behind the ear, BTE, or postoral, can make use of eyeglasses and phones difficult. It is more difficult to keep in place during physical exercise. The nurse is assisting a patient with rheumatoid arthritis to bathe at the sink. During the bath, the patient states that she is tired. The nurse notices the patient is breathing rapidly and the pulse is rapid. What is the nurse's best response? A. Finish the bath quickly. B. Help the patient return to bed. C. Leave the patient alone to rest in the chair at the sink for a few minutes. D. Instruct the patient to take deep breaths and try to relax. Answer. B. Help the patient return to bed rationale. The report of fatigue and rapid respirations and pulse indicates that the patient is not tolerating the activity and needs to rest. Leaving the patient alone at the sink is not safe. A nurse is assigned to care for the following patients. Which of the patients is most at risk for developing skin problems and thus requiring thorough bathing and skin care? A. A 44-year-old female who has had removal of a breast lesion and is having her menstrual period. B. A 56-year-old male patient who is homeless and admitted to the emergency department with malnutrition and dehydration and who has an intravenous line. C. A 60-year-old female who experienced a stroke with right-sided paralysis and has an orthopedic brace applied to the left leg. D. A 70-year-old patient who has diabetes and dementia and has been incontinent of stool. Answer. D. A 70-year-old patient who has diabetes and dementia and has been incontinent of stool. Rationale. All of the patients require careful bathing. The 44-year-old female needs good perennial hygiene. The 56-year-old patient is at risk for drying and fragility of the skin. The 60-year-old patient has reduced sensation and mobility and thus is unaware of skin problems or pressure areas. However, the 70-year-old patient has reduced circulation, which increases risk for infection and is likely unaware of skin problems because of dementia. The presence of stool will also irritate the skin. The patient is being fitted with a hearing aid. In teaching the patient how to care for the hearing aid, which instructions will the nurse provide? A. Change the battery every day or as needed. B. Adjust the volume for a talking distance of one yard. C. Wear the hearing aid 24 hours per day except when sleeping. D. 
Avoid the use of hairspray, but aerosol perfumes are allowed. Answer. B. Adjust the volume for a talking distance of one yard. Rationale. Adjust volume to a comfortable level for talking at a distance of one yard. Initially, wear a hearing aid for 15 to 20 minutes. Then gradually increase wear time to 10 to 12 hours per day. Batteries last one week with daily wearing of 10 to 12 hours. Avoid the use of hairspray and perfume while wearing hearing aids. Residue from the spray can cause the aid to become oily and greasy. Which of the following hearing aids, which interferes the most with wearing eyeglasses and using a phone? A. In the canal hearing aid B. In the ear hearing aid C. Behind the ear hearing aid D. They are all equally useful. Answer. C. Behind the ear hearing aid rationale. The behind the ear aid hooks around and behind the ear and is connected by a short, clear, hollow plastic tube to a near mold inserted into the external auditory canal. It is useful for patients with rapidly progressive hearing loss or manual dexterity difficulties. But it is more visible and interferes with wearing eyeglasses and using a phone. And in the canal aid is the newest, smallest, and least visible and fits entirely in the ear canal. It does not interfere with wearing eyeglasses or using the telephone, but it does not accommodate progressive hearing loss and requires manual dexterity to operate. And in the ear aid does not interfere with wearing of eyeglasses or phone usage, but it is more noticeable than the in the canal aid and is not useful for persons with skin problems in the ear canal. When you are assigned to a patient who has a reduced level of consciousness and requires mouth care, which physical assessment techniques should you perform before the procedure? Select all that apply. A. Oxygen saturation B. Heart rate C. Respirations D. Gag reflex E. Response to painful stimulus. Answer. C. Respirations D. Gag reflex rationale. Check a patient's respirations and whether there is a gag reflex present to determine risk for aspiration and to establish a baseline for the patient's condition. A patient who is cognitively impaired and has dementia requires hygiene care. The patient often displays aggressive behavior such as screaming and hitting during the bath. Which techniques make the bathing experience less stressful for both the nurse and the patient? Select all that apply. A. Allow the patient to perform as much of the care as possible. B. Start by washing the face. C. Try an alternative to traditional bathing such as the bag bath. D. Use restraints to prevent the patient from injuring self or the nurse. Answer. A. Allow the patient to perform as much of the care as possible. C. Try an alternative to traditional bathing such as the bag bath. Rationale. Patients with cognitive impairment may respond to bathing by acting out aggressively. Studies have indicated that there are several triggering events, including washing the face first. The bag bath has been shown to result in a lower incidence of aggressive behavior than traditional bathing. Use of restraints is not warranted and can actually lead to injury as the patient often fights against the restraints. Integrity of the oral mucosa depends on salivary secretion. Which of the following factors impairs salivary secretion? Select all that apply. A. Use of cough drops B. Immunosuppression C. Radiation therapy D. Dehydration E. Presence of oral airway Answer. C. Radiation therapy D. Dehydration rationale Radiation therapy reduces salivary flow. Dehydration impairs salivary secretion in the mouth. Cough drops increase sugar or acid content in the mouth, causing caries. Immunosuppression causes inflammation and bleeding of the gums. An oral airway irritates oral mucosa. 
The student nurse is teaching a family member the importance of foot care for his or her mother, who has diabetes. Which safety precautions are important for the family member to know to prevent infection? Select all that apply. A. Cut nails frequently. B. Assess skin for redness, abrasions, and open areas daily. C. Soak feet in water at least 10 minutes before nail care. D. Apply lotion to feet daily. E. Clean between toes after bathing. Answer. B. Assess skin for redness, abrasions, and open areas daily. D. Apply lotion to feet daily. E. Clean between toes after bathing. Rationale. Because of a patient's risk for infection, it is important to assess skin for redness, abrasions, and open areas daily. Apply lotion to feet daily to keep the skin hydrated, but do not leave excess lotion on the skin. Clean between toes carefully after bathing to avoid maceration. Do not cut nails or soak the feet of a patient with diabetes because this may create skin breakdown and open sores, leading to skin breakdown or infection. The American Dental Association suggests that patients who are at risk for poor hygiene use the following interventions for oral care. Select all that apply. A. Use antimicrobial toothpaste. B. Brush teeth four times a day. C. Use 0.12% chlorhexidine gluconate, CHG, oral rinses. D. Use a soft toothbrush for oral care. E. Avoid cleaning the gums and tongue. Answer. A. Use antimicrobial toothpaste. C. Use 0.12% chlorhexidine gluconate, CHG, oral rinses. D. Use a soft toothbrush for oral care. Rationale. The American Dental Association Guidelines, 2014, for effective oral hygiene include brushing the teeth at least twice a day with an American Dental Association approved fluoride toothpaste. Use antimicrobial toothpastes and 0.12% CHG oral rinses for patients at increased risk for poor oral hygiene, e.g., older adults and patients with cognitive impairments and who are immunocompromised. Rounded soft bristles stimulate the gums without causing abrasion and bleeding. Patients should clean gum and the surface of the tongue.